Hey guys, so yesterday I got this chewed up package in the mail. Something tells me the sender did a wonderful job packing it and that my post office just ate this thing alive. So good job, Nashville Post Office. But this comes from my friend Hame in Portugal. She's one of the members of Ink Drop Cafe and she does comics herself. So you guys need to check the description below for links to where you can check out Hame's work. And she promised a while back to send me a package. Now I have an idea of what's in here, but I don't actually know. But I thought you guys might be excited to take a look at what's inside. So I'm going to carefully cut along the edges and curse my Nashville post office for doing a really terrible job. And I even send this video to them so they can see what they did to this box. Seriously, it looks like the machine ate it. All right, I've got it. And look, I think she even used like an official box for mailing and yet it got eaten. I am so sorry, Hame. And it also sat in my mailbox for a few days. So it may, some of these things, yeah, look. I am so sorry, Hame. Um, so it was super rainy because we're getting a tropical storm from Louisiana right now. And a lot of these papers unfortunately got discolored from my wonderful mailbox. So I am still going to use these. And um, I am so sorry, Hame, that, oh gosh! I'm so sorry that these things got messed up. But thank you so much for sending me all this cool stuff, especially candies, I love candies. So we have watercolor papers and I'll go over those with you guys in a second. We've got, oh cool, a double-ended pencil with blue and red. I have a feeling this is like an animator's pencil or a sketching pencil. We've got a couple of Stabilos. We've got, and I know what these are, these are tiger markers, which is awesome because I have talked, I've seen the videos for these and oh wow, uh, this allows me to actually add another marker to the list of markers that I will have reviewed and looked at. We have a super cute, oh my goodness, tote bag. Let me open this and I'll show you guys. There's always room for just one tote bag in the world, in my wardrobe and in my heart. Thank you, Hame. So cute. Ah! Ah! So cute! Look at the letter! Look at the art, look how cute. I'm so, so, so sorry, Hame, that this got messed up, but I'm gonna put this in a book and hopefully it will be all right. And she also sent a cute little watercolor set. So I'm gonna set the box aside. I went ahead and I blacked everything out so you guys can't stalk her, other than through her wonderful comic. And um, I'm gonna read the letter and hopefully that's okay. If it's not okay, Hame, I hope you will tell me. Hi Becca, how are you? I hope this box and letter finds you well. So it's a tiny box, but I hope you enjoy its few contents. Pretty much all contents are cheap, or at least we consider them cheap here. So I guess we can, uh, you can use them all for a cheap art supply challenge. Some though have a little better, wait, some though behave a little better. Well anyway, here's a rundown on the box contents. From Flying Tiger of Copenhagen, Denmark. Watercolor box set, 12 colors with a something. I will find out in a minute, brush. Uh, two alcohol markers from a set of three. <laughs> Sorry, I kept the blender it looks like, or maybe it's the black marker. That's totally fine. Thank you so much for sending these. I really honestly only need one just for comparative purposes. So that's awesome. Four sheets of paper, watercolor. And then the tote is an extra spoil and couldn't help herself. And then from a local paper store, two of the paper sheets, two Stabilo fine liners, and aha, a Verico double pencil, and then some fun facts. I bought you this teeny pencil for two extra reasons rather than being cheap, I th other than being cheap. Sorry guys, my eyesight's terrible. Um, I thought you may appreciate a historical art item, so to say. This is made here in Portugal by hand still. Oh my goodness. Oh wait, I hope it's this. I hope it wasn't something really cute and tiny that fell out. I'll be so mad at my post office. Maybe it's in my mailbox still. I have to go digging. Um, this is made here in Portugal by hand still in the Varco factory. Yeah, I think that's this. Yes, I think so. Woo! 
It's still made the same way as when the factory opened, but the main reason I'm sending it is because it became known as the paper pencil of censure? Yes, during our dictatorship, wow, our dictatorship until 1974, books and all publications in general were censored with this pencil. That's crazy. Not on the red side, though, but actually the blue. I hope you enjoy arting with it. Yeah, take it back with the once a censure weapon. I sure will. Thank you. Um, and then, of course, beautiful art. Oh, I'm going to owe you some fan art. Um, because I love feeding people a bag, bag of handmade candies in the box. They're made in the north of the country in the birthplace of our tiny, uh, tiny sea planted country. I hope you like them. And then letter paper is elderflower, French made. Oh, that's so cool. So thank you so much. I'm gonna put the letter in a book and hopefully it'll flatten out a bit. Now let's take a look at these papers, which I still think are super cool, even though my mailman is a huge jerk. So this is Aquavel block, 300 gram from Tiger, and that's the flying tiger from Copenhagen. So this is from a paper pad. Oh, okay. Oh, I see, okay. Um, and it's glued, aha, uh -huh, so it's like the fluid pads, it's been, these are blocks usually. Um, it's glued on all sides so it's hard to get off the pad. Had to actually cut the edge to find the sheets. And it comes in size A4, cut to, oh, and, and Hame had to cut two centimeters of height to fit in the box. No, that's fine, thank you so much. Um, these also I am going to put in a book for a while to get them to flatten. So these are from Tiger. Tiger is kind of, sort of, from what I have been told, sort of like a Daiso or sort of like a Dollar Tree, where um, you can find all sorts of goodies at a very affordable price. Um, some of them behave better than others. All right, and then, whoa, oh my goodness. Lots of labels, that's fantastic. So many papers. So, um, Pepel Cavallino. Um, super accessible and cheap paper pad, usually 150 grams. This one is 35. Nice for sketching. Inks with nib hold well too. Markers are good. Yeah, I'm feeling this. I'm like, this is marker paper. Markers are good too. Can handle light washes of gouache. Acrylics are very light watercolors. They need strap. Yeah, they need stretching for that though. This is drawing paper for school. So graphite, Conte, and carbon is great. And then, ooh, I like this. This is gonna be bad, because I really like this already. I love, I love textured watercolor papers. It doesn't matter if they're cotton rag or um, cellulose base. I love textured watercolor papers. So this is Ambar, 240 grams, blue. Sorry, a coarse grain watercolor, A5. It's from a brand that usually does school stationery. The paper is so-so, but I actually enjoy the texture sometimes, yeah. Also holds a good amount of water, yeah. Yeah, so this might be comparable to Strathmore in terms of like, it's got a good texture, but it doesn't always play nice. So that's gonna be fun and interesting. And then this is Canton Mixed Media, and it feels like it has a different texture. So in the US, Canton Mixed Media is usually um, almost like a hot press, but not really. It's more like a smooth Bristol sort of texture. So it's got some tooth, but not a whole lot of tooth. Same amount of tooth as a lot of drawing papers. Um, I'm sort of getting the impression though that I know Japanese drawing papers tend to have like um, a finer finish and I think European ones, at least um, I've sampled some from Germany and now I have some from Portugal, um, tend to have a, a finer finish than American ones. American ones are still a little pulpy and will really grab your pencil. So um, when I say um, like American drawing papers, I mean like it's got, I, should, I wish I could, I would really like to send you some papers, Hame, now, especially because I'm like, oh, these are so different. Because um, I use Canton XL watercolor paper, and I have, I believe, some Canton XL American paper somewhere squirreled away. I think I was given it as a sample. So, um, and it feels very different from this. This has a texture to it. Um, and Hame says it is too textured for her, and it is a block of paper with a blue cover. Uh, but it handles water really well, even on the smooth back. Okay, so the back is smooth and the front is, you know, um, she says she cheats and prefers that. A lot of mixed media papers do that on purpose, actually, um, at least here in the US, where one side has one texture and the other has another, and you're meant to use the one you prefer. 
So, um, and some of them are even designed that you can use both sides. Now, I don't like using both sides myself because um, in a sketchbook, they'll rub together and it'll ruin both pieces. So if you're going to do that, put some tracing paper in between. Sorry, I had to fold this over. Usually, I'm just gonna cut it in half because it's gonna make it a size I really like, which is like five and a half by eight. And it's a six with detachable sheets. So this is super duper cool. And we're going to take a look now at the supplies. All right, so this is the watercolor set. And this is from Tiger and I cannot, okay, so English watercolor, share your creations at hashtag DIY flying T. And this is made by Zebra AS Strongrad, God bleh, sorry, uh, Strangrad, Gad. Mm. Copenhagen, Denmark, and made in China. So, always so jealous because it seems like everybody else gets cooler, cheap art supplies than we do. I mean, look at this. It's like a cute little spaceship. And let's see if we can get this open. Ooh, okay. Oh, that brush is gonna, look at this brush. This brush is a joke. The brush is gonna have to go. Look at that brush. So what I might do if it is cool with Hame is um, I might keep most of the paper. Well, I'll keep one of each, but um, I will, I think I will sample these and maybe do a piece with them. And then I will send them on to our friend and fellow IDC member Kabocha. Um, and that way, you know, multiple people can get a look at, maybe we can do like, um, around Robin where lots of members get a look at these supplies and can give some input. So these are all individually wrapped and they're in there. So they're little half pans of watercolor. And I'll go ahead and unwrap just one on camera. There's no, no color names, no color information, which isn't surprising since it came from a store like, uh, sim uh, a store like Tiger, which is similar again, like I said, to Daiso or Dollar Tree, maybe more so Dollar General. Um, but from what I noticed, it just seems like other countries when it comes to art supplies, even their cheap art supplies are nicer than our mid-range art supplies because this really reminds me of, say, a Cotman set. Now, what's interesting is the little legs on the bottom. And it's a little wobbly, but it's really not bad. And then, oh, oh, I see. Hmm, that's interesting. We'll see if that's on purpose or not. It kips this up just a wee bit if you put this flat. So it never really lies perfectly flat, which is interesting. Shut that. And then of course we have the double-sided censorship crayon, which um, I think it is super cool that she included this. And um, I am excited about, I think it's also cool that they're still made the same way they used to be. And um, it's really popular to use colored LEDs, right? I mean, it's, if you are an animator, if you're a comic person, it's always been um, trendy to use colored LEDs, but now it's popular to use colored LEDs even in your finished work. So this is gonna be fun to play with. And the tiger markers are going to be fun. They're double-sided. And um, I believe a set of three is like approximately $3.99 USD, which is like what, a, a $1.25? a dollar no a dollar 33 approximately um us which is really cheap and they've got a ridiculous color naming system um, and by ridiculous i just mean it's probably such a small collection of markers that um like why why even you know like the color chips are gonna be what you go by and then stabilos are really Fun. They are also pretty cool and I don't play with them nearly enough and I believe I have these colors. I may not. Um, I may have. Yeah, I think I do. So maybe not though. Maybe, maybe not. We'll find out. So what I'm going to do is if I have these colors, I'm just going to put these in a box and send them off to Kabocha because I've got some other stuff I want to send to her. And if they are not duplicates, I might keep them because I'm a terrible person. But uh, I'm going to try to use and experiment and show off for you guys as much as possible and then send it on to its next owner. So I hope that is cool with you, Hame. And I want to thank you so much for sending me this care package with your adorable art. After it is flattened, I'm going to put it up on my wall. I hope you don't mind me reading your, your adorably sweet letter. 
Um, you are just adorable and a, a handful of sunshine. Um, and I really want to send you something in return, so please do allow me to. Um, I have a huge collection of American watercolor papers and art papers, so please let me send that in return, as well as maybe some markers and some other goodies. I mean, I have amassed quite a collection from doing Art Snacks versus Sketchbox over the years. So I have loads of goodies to share, and I love these sort of exchanges. So if you're interested in doing an art supply exchange with me, get in con especially if you're from another co country. Like I've never done anything with Chinese supplies made in China, intended for Chinese audience consumption. So I would love to do that sort of a trade. Same goes with um, like Korean art supplies or um, Indian art supplies or gosh, um, any Middle Eastern country. I've never had an opportunity to explore anything like that. Um, uh, of course, we get some English art supplies like Derwent and uh, Windsor and Newton here, but I'd love to do a trade. Same goes for French. So basically, if or I've never done anything Australian either. So basically, if you're in another country and you have some interesting brands or uh, your inexpensive art supplies are of a different quality than U.S. inexpensive art supplies, shoot me an email and we can do an art supply exchange and I'll go over it on my channel because I think this stuff is super cool. So many of these things were things from Portugal, although a few of them were things from Copenhagen. And thank you so much, Hame. Make sure you check the description below for links to Hame's work. And you guys need to look forward to her webcomic, which is going to be launching soon. I don't have an exact date. I will leave that to Hame, but her art is gorgeous. So I know if you like my art, you will love hers. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you, Hame, so much for sending me this box. And I hope you guys have a great day and that you guys will check out Ink Drop Cafe, the creator's collective at inkdropcafe.com. Bye, guys. I'm going to eat that candy. I'm going to eat that candy. I'm going to eat that candy. Oh, it's going to taste so good. I'm going to eat that candy. I'm going to eat that candy. I'm going to eat that candy. Oh, it's gonna taste so good. Come on. It's probably sticky because it sat in my mailbox while I was at A2K. I'll eat it with the paper on. I don't care. I have eaten <laughs> candy in worse situations. I bet this is honey, honey lemon flavor, which would be great. Oh, mmm. It's like honey and whorehound? It's really good. Oh my god. Mm -mm -mm. Water, sugar, and aromatic plants. I'm gonna have to send something good in return.